Good evening, ladies. I am up. It's about 11.40 here, Eastern Standard Time. And I just um, did a little bit of quiet time. And I was reading about the early church um, in Acts, Acts chapter 2, verse 42. And I was just reading it and just studying it and kind of breaking down um, the characteristics of the early church and just really encouraged by it especially right now with the virus going on and not being able to fellowship with my church, um, having to um, watch online and not being able to actually go into a service and worship and fellowship with other believers. Um, I'm pretty sure a lot of you guys are probably experiencing the same thing. Um, but I know that this is something temporary and I know that the storm is passing. People have their idea of how long they think this will last, but I think that as quick as this thing, um, has come is as quick we, as we'll see it leave. I don't think this is something that's going to last long at all. I'm believing God and trusting God to see a different outcome. Um, but I was just so encouraged this evening um, with reading um, Acts um, chapter 2, verse 32. And it says, they, speaking of the church, the early church, they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching, to the fellowship, to the breaking of bread, and to prayer. Um, so, you know, to me, because um, I've seen a couple different scriptures that really emphasize the importance of believers coming together and fellowshipping. Um, I was just really encouraged by this verse and just really breaking it down. Um, and when it says they devoted themselves to the teaching of the apostle, um, the teachings included the teachings of Jesus. And so even though we're in this season where we cannot fellowship with other believers and many of our churches have gone to online services, um, we still want to make sure that we're still on those online services, um, getting fed the word and that we're not just um, getting fed the word, but that we're actually digesting it. Um, the early church, they devoted themselves to the teaching of the apostles, which included the teaching of Jesus himself, because Jesus is the one who taught the apostles. Um, they diligently preserved, persevered in learning what Jesus said and what he did and what it meant. I'm reading from my own notes, um, things that I got from reading this verse. So they dedicated themselves to learning God's word and not only learning it and learning what Jesus did himself, but they devoted themselves and persisted in applying God's word to their lives. And um, it's so important because like right now with the live services, you know, we can commit ourselves to being on those live services that our churches are um, putting out there. And we can devote ourselves to learning by making sure we're taking good notes and then going back later and studying those notes and um, applying application to those things that our pastors are teaching us. How can we apply this truth to our lives? And um, I did want to share with you guys um, how to take sermon notes because it seems like maybe for the next couple of weeks, this is what we will be doing. Um, because of the restrictions with gathering, we will be watching church services online. Um, so I did want to come on tonight and um, talk a little bit about how to take sermon notes. So I have a little uh, guide here that I wrote for myself. But... Um, Basically, I'll just jump right into it. So on the notebook, and you guys probably already take your sermon notes. I'm not sure, but this is for maybe if you want to enhance the way you take your sermon notes, or if you don't take sermon notes, maybe you want to start. Because um, I definitely think like in this time, in this season, God is really calling us 
to go deeper in him. And God is drawing us closer to him. And we have to be wise with that time. Are we using this time to Netflix and chill? Or are we using this time to really get into his word, um, to pray, and to really get to know God, to just calm down from our busy lives and just really seek the Lord? Um, what is God saying in this season? You know, God wants to speak to us directly. He wants to share his heart with us, but are we still enough to be able to receive these things? And, you know, God speaks words to us through our pastors, our shepherds. Um, are we taking those things and are we going back and applying those things to our lives? Are we going to church and are we really, because um, we're getting fed, but are we really digesting the word? So... I think that in this season where we are kind of not forced, I don't know if that's the right word, but you know, we're in the season where we have to be still. Are we using it to our advantage? Are we getting taking the most out of it, getting the most out of it? And so taking these sermon notes, you know, with these Sunday services, going back Monday and really studying it studying with our pastors, uh, the words that they're giving us, going deeper and seeing how we can apply these truths to our lives and looking for opportunities to uh, walk out this word, if that makes sense. Um, but I'm really excited about watching church online tomorrow and seeing what my pastor, my husband, <laughs> Um, what he will be speaking about and just really taking that word, praying over that word and asking God to take me deeper in that word. So um, with the sermon notes and how I take sermon notes is that um, I write the title of the sermon here. Um, I write the name of the speaker, the pastor here. Um, and then I write the scripture here um, which usually a pastor, they'll give that main scripture that is going to be the meat of what they're speaking about, their message. Um, so I'll write that scripture word for word. And then underneath that, I'll go and write the main points. What is the main point of the message? Um, any sub points, because usually the pastor will have sub points. Um, any additional sub points there, put that up close so that you guys can see it and supporting scripture, scripture, interpret scripture, scripture backs up scripture. So a lot of times your pastor or our pastors may have scriptures that support the main point, the main scripture. And sometimes our pastor has more than one point they are trying to make. So I will write point number two here, along with any sub points um, and another sub point. And they may have another supporting scripture. So that goes here. And then uh, once I have finished my notes, that's where I sit and think and pray and I write my application. In what ways can I apply this message, this truth to my life? And then I write a prayer. And that is how I conclude my sermon notes. And then I'll just meditate on that. And sometimes I'll go back and rewatch the message because we have our services live on Facebook. Um, so if I'm in service and then i'll go back the next day when i'm getting ready to study that sermon and just go deeper i'll go back and watch the live or if i'm not at church and i'm watching online um i'll be able to take my notes and um yeah so that's you know the next day monday i just go deeper um, it's a great way to be able to study God's word and um, he's speaking to our shepherd, um, through our shepherd to us. And so 
you know, I don't want to just get fed, but I want to actually eat and digest that word. Um, I want God's word to fall on good soil. And so it's important that um, I'm soaking in that word. And I studied my own, you know, scriptures on my own, but um, that Sunday word is important. I'm I'm sitting up under someone, and so I'm I'm trusting that they are hearing from God, and so it's important for me to apply those truths um, to my life. As a believer, God has given the man of God or the woman of God. Um, as shepherds over us. And so they are responsible for our spiritual well, uh, well being. And so we have to um, walk alongside of them and, um, you know, live it out, walk it out. So I hope that you guys find this video helpful and encouraging and a blessing. And I'm excited about our book that we will be reading um, and just really going deeper into our prayer lives. We've read this book as a group before, and so I'm really excited to um, revisit the book. I know a lot of us still use it as a resource. Um, I just think that this book is so appropriate for this season in our lives. This is the time, it's always the time to be fervent in prayer. Um, it's always the time to be fervent in prayer. The Bible tells us to be alert, to watch and pray. And so um, if we've gotten off track with that, this is an opportunity for us to get together and, and just walk through this together and um, just help each other be fervent in our prayer lives. and. I'm excited. I'm excited about going deeper, going deeper in the word, going deeper in prayer. And I'm excited that I get to go um, on this journey with you ladies. So um, stay tuned for more announcements in regards to fervent. And if you haven't gotten the book, it's not too late to order it. Um, our discussion will be not this Thursday, but next Thursday. And I've already posted the reading assignment so you guys can go back and take a look at that. The posts are dated. It was one of three posts. And so I hope all you guys have a good night and I will be back soon to talk to you guys more. I really enjoy making these videos. I need to make more of them. <laughs> but God bless you all. I love you guys. Good night.